Hey guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Went out of the shop tonight to demo a product that I received the other day, and I just want to make a little bit of a video here to uh, show you what it does and what I think about it. Now, let me say right off the bat, this is not a paid endorsement. I did not get paid to make this video, but I did receive the product for free. Uh, so you can, you know, put that in the back of your mind while I'm doing this uh, review. Um, the product I got was from Bigfoot Products up in Canada. Uh, David owns the company up there and uh, he's all the time coming up with new products and kind of unique ideas and I thought this you know kind of fit the bill is fairly unique I've not seen this done before uh, it doesn't mean that nobody's done it but I've not seen it as a product and uh, so I thought it was kind of neat and uh, uh, I've always said that David he spends he must spend every night trying to think of something new because he's always coming up with uh, unique products uh, so anyway I'm gonna review one from him tonight and the product that he has come up with, the name of it is the Belt Binder Multi-Fiber Strips. And what these strips allow you to do is to take rolls of sandpaper and cut them to length that you need and bind them together with these multi-fiber strips so you can make your own belts for your upright sander or for in this case that you're going to see tonight I used it with my sand devil which is one of my favorite hand sanding tools that I've got in the shop. Uh, and he talks about the cost savings that you can get from uh, making your own belts. Now, he talks about making these belts for, you know, for pennies. And it's actually a little more than that. Um, you'll have to take the um, price uh, that I come up with here a little bit for a grain of salt because uh, it, it does depend on the quality of the sandpaper that you buy. I bought a very high quality sandpaper. Um, so you have to you know add some other things in there so let me jump over here to the slideshow real quick and let's take a look at what you get I'm gonna zoom in on this picture just a little bit uh, right here is the microfiber strips and you will cut these to size depending on the size of the belt that you're gluing together and you either get two uh, let me go back to his website here real quick let me talk about this just for a second before we go any farther. Um, what you can buy from David is you can buy two yards of this belt binder multi-fiber strips. And what they are is they're basically just a very strong material. Uh, so they hold these the seam, the joint together really well. You can buy two yards, which is going to make you a lot of belts for $12.95. You can buy four yards for $19.95. And then the... Uh, the belt binder jig which is basically just a jig to kind of hold things together while you put the clamp uh, on the belt and that's 1995 I'll be perfectly honest with you I did not use the jig I, it comes unassembled I did go ahead and assemble it and I think it would have worked fine it may even been easier than what I did uh, but I just didn't use it I just did it my way so uh, you can make up your mind if you buy the deluxe kit which comes with the uh, uh, strips you get uh, four yards of the strips and you get the jig uh, and that comes at $34.95. So when you take all these prices in account, uh, and again, you can make up your mind how useful the jig is to you, you can make these belts, for, uh, for uh, again, the three inch wide belts uh, for my sand devil, which we're going to do tonight. I can make each individual belt for somewhere between a dollar and a dollar six, depending on what waist you get out of your 35 foot roll. Uh, what waste you get out of the strips when you cut them down. Uh, so that's about the price that it takes me to make a belt with this high quality sandpaper. Um, when I buy these belts for the Sand Devil, uh, they cost me about $2.50 a piece. So you're getting about 100% savings, and that's not bad. It's not pennies, uh, but it's a good savings. It's, you know, it's 50% or 100% uh, price break. Uh, the other thing that's the advantage about these is you, if you buy a 35 foot row of sandpaper which I did which cost me $22 I've got enough sandpaper there to make a lot of these belts and so I'm never going to be in the middle of a project and say oh I don't have any of these sand devil belts I can't buy them locally because they're an odd size I always have to order them offline uh, so you have the advantage of always having them there and ready to build and so far and I'll show you here in the in the uh, um, video slideshow th that uh, the process is really very easy it just takes a little bit to build them and uh, I think it's pretty co pretty convenient on top of the price savings 
So let's jump over here again to this picture. And again, this is the microfiber material that we're going to be using in the seams. This is the jig, and I'm just showing it here next to my upright sander so you get an idea of the size of the jig. And uh, that, that's all that was for. Let's go to the next slide. This is the 35 foot roll of sandpaper I purchased. Now, um, I could have bought four inch wide, and this is what I probably should have done if I'd have been thinking, you know, at the time I did it. I could have bought four inch wide sandpaper, and I could have made belts for my four inch upright sander, and then when I got ready to make them for my three inch wide sand devil, I could have just cut a strip off of it, you know, off the side and cut it down to three inches. At the time, I didn't think that through very well. Um, but it would have been a better savings for me. Another thing to consider is sometimes when you buy the pre-made belts, they come in a box of four or six, and you may buy a box that has multiple different grits of sandpaper in it. Um, when you're doing this, you're basically going to buy one grit. Uh, so you want to make up your mind whether it's very important for you to have multiple grits of your belt. For me personally, when I use my upright sander, I'm almost always using 120 grit, and when I use uh, my sand devil, I either have 80 or 120 in it also. So for me personally, buying a 4 inch wide roll of 35 foot of you know, 120 grit sandpaper, I would be fine because I've, I, I never change those grits on either of those devices. The sanding that I do, the more detailed sanding I do, you know, by hand with just flat sheets of salt sandpaper usually. Again, this is the front end of the belt that I'm going to be replacing on my sand devil, and this is a jig. And this is the sand devil. Now the sand devil I've reviewed before here on the scroll saw workshop, and it is absolutely my favorite hand sander that I've ever owned. And what it allows you to do is this is a, a release clamp right here. You put these belts on, then you clamp it down and you get a nice tight fit of the belt. And the thing that's so nice about it is I've got all these different contours that I can use. I can use this edge, I can use this contour, I can use this small contour here, this one right here, or of course the flat side. Another thing I'm able to do is to take this sandpaper, loosen this clamp, slide the sandpaper off the edge of the jig a little bit, and you can get into some very fine corners and stuff with that. So again, I've done a review of this before, so I won't get into that too much more. Uh, but it's a great tool. It's it's my favorite sanding tool. I go to this on almost every large project that I make in the shop. Now, what I decided I needed to do was figure out the exact length of this belt. I know it's three inches wide, but I wasn't absolutely sure what the length was. So I've got this used up piece of sandpaper here, and I decided to take it off of the sand devil and then actually cut it so I could lay it out flat and take a yardstick and measure it and it ended up being uh, 21 and 1 16th or 21 and 1 32nd of an inch long so that's how long I needed to cut the piece of sandpaper off my roll so that worked out very well so now I have laid out my roll of sandpaper and again I'm marking the 21 and 1 32nd inch uh, on the sandpaper now one thing you want to do is on, you're going to have a cut on each end of this strip of sandpaper when you get done and you want these cuts to be very accurate because when you go to seam them together you want them to fit together nice and snug so the way I got around that is I actually just used a square and once I figured out the length that it needed to be in market I just put a square across there used an exacto knife to cut it and before I cut it I had also cut the other end and then measured the length so I had two very nice 90 degree cuts which is pretty important okay here's the belt after I've got it cut and uh, it's ready to be glued together now here is the microfiber strip that I cut down to longer than the length I needed because it only needs to be the length of the width of this belt but it's just easier to trim it when you get done what I did is I applied super glue on the bottom of this roll of sandpaper and I applied it to one half of this seaming strip. So underneath this section right here is super glue. Now, this is not something David recommended, but I just tried it. I also sprayed some super glue activator on this cloth uh, because I wanted to see how it would work, and it ended up working really well. So I put the super glue on the back of this about a half an inch in uh, so I could cover half of this seam. And then I put a little bit of activator on the, on the material. 
I pressed it and held it together a little bit until it, you know, it started to dry, which is pretty quick with super glue. And then the next step is you glue the other end together, which I did it exactly the same way. Half an inch in, I put the super glue, put it on the other half of the fiber strip. Now this is where you would normally use the jig, and you'll see that in his demo video, uh, where you would use that jig to give yourself room to put this clamp in. I didn't use it. Uh, like I said, it, it was fine. It wasn't that there was any problem with it. Is I just took two pieces of wood because I wanted to get clamps on both sides of the seam. And when you do it this way, you actually start out with just a clamp on one side. Now, when you took it off, you could go ahead and put a clamp on the other side, but I just skipped a step and did it this way. So your judgment whether you like it or not. So here it is. I'm letting the seam dry up. In between these pieces of wood, which there's one on the bottom and one on the top, um, I put wax paper, and that's to prevent the super glue from um, gluing itself to these blocks of wood, and I let it clamp. Now, in David's video, he talks about letting this set for at least an hour and even 24 hours for it to cure. Um, I pushed that limit a little bit because I put the activator on it. I, I probably had this thing out of here in 30 or 45 minutes. Again, I just wanted to test it, so um, that's what I did. When I took it apart, what you can see in the next section here. I did go ahead and cut off the edges of the seam material so it would be flush with the side of the belt. And you can see here, one of the things David has you to do is once you get it glued on the back, he has you run a thin bead of glue on this side of the sandpaper right where the seam is, just to give it a little more reinforcement. Now, you should use a fairly liquid glue, and I had a, a gel super glue, so I made a little bit of a mess right here uh, that if you used a fine liquid glue, you could get it in the seam a little better, and you wouldn't make the mess that I made, uh, but it, it still seemed to work fine. This is the mess I made, and when I put my finger over this, it was a little rough, but it wasn't as bad as it looks in this picture, um, but this is going to be on a stationary sand devil tool so it's not like it's going to move and I can just move this out of the way but I thought just to be safe I took some 180 grit sandpaper maybe 120 and I sanded that seam down smooth and by the time I got done you couldn't even feel the seam but again if you ran a fine bead of liquid super glue across here I don't think you would have this mess at all I don't think it would be a problem might be wrong but I don't think it would be to test this thing, when I got it out and had let it dry for, like I said, only an hour, um, I decided I would pull on it pretty hard, and if I broke it, I broke it. I've got plenty more sandpaper to make more. I pulled on this thing really hard, and when David said this microfiber material is strong, he's right. It's strong, and the super glue um, really puts this together as a nice welded seam. Um, just to give it kind of a long-term test, I went ahead and ha hung a 5 pound block of wood uh, from this belt hanging from a board and it's been hanging now for about three or four hours and this this joint's not going to break. Um, the only thing that I came up with is on the very corner of one piece I didn't get the super glue spread out real well so the material was lifting just on a very small corner uh, so I did go back and put a little bit of super glue on the back of the material there and that seemed fine it, it glued right up because I sprayed the activator on it and it set instantly uh, so in my opinion the strength of these belts is fine uh, the convenience of having a roll of sandpaper that I can make belts from I like that uh, the cost savings of about 50 percent you know, I don't know that I use enough sandpaper that the cost saving is as important as the convenience. And again, you have to make up your mind whether that making the belts is a convenience to you or whether spending the extra money and buying them is a convenience. Like I said earlier, for me, just having it there, knowing I can make a belt when I'm in the middle of a project at 3 o'clock in the morning and I don't have another belt handy, I can just make one. I should have bought the larger belt and cut these down to size for the smaller sand devil. Um, so I'll know that the next time um, because I am going to buy a four foot roll of sandpaper now to make belts for my upright sander. Uh, the problem is now that I have this three inch wide roll, uh, I'll probably never use the four inch for this. I'll just make them out of this. So up front, if you know that, you might want to consider buying just the, the larger width and cutting it down. Uh, of course, if you do cut it down, you're going to have to, you know, come up with a fairly easy way to make a straight cut. And uh, I would just lay a yardstick over it, a metal yardstick, and use the X-Acto knife to cut down the length of it after you, you know, after you cut it to length. So I don't think that's a problem. 
that is the slideshow that I've got of this product. Again, you can go to David's site at bigfootproducts.ca um, or you can just do a Google search for Bigfoot products and uh, you'll find it. Uh, again, the price is $34.95 for the deluxe kit, um, $12.95 for the two yards and $4.95 for uh, $19.95 for the four yards. And uh, this is not a bad deal. You will get your money back out of this after you have made a few belts. So, you know, it won't take that many belts, to, especially if you go with the $12.95 for the two yards. You're going to get that money back pretty quick. So I hope that's a little bit of a helpful review for you if you decide to take a look at this product. And uh, we'll we'll test it over the next several months here in the shop and maybe uh, six months from now I'll come back and give you a little better idea of the durability of it. Right now I don't see a problem with the durability but again it's something you might have to use for a while to know for sure. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop and we'll see you next time.